Okay, here's the bare Kilpatrick format system with nothing patched in. This is the system number two. So let's start with the, the mixer interface and the pitch oscillator. So I can just plug, let's say, a sine output into one of the inputs. The indicator lights when there's a signal, even when the output is, or the input level is down. Uh, this is kind of a handy way to see like where signals are coming from. And uh, so this is a wide range oscillator. If uh, it has an, an, a way you can override the range using like there's a coarse and fine tuning adjustment. But there's also uh, an offset switch so you can program two ranges in and it also lets you add or subtract from the existing range of the coarse and fine so you can actually get into pretty slow signals like a couple of hertz. Uh, there's a triangle output, ramp out, and pulse out. Um, let me just turn this down a little. The pulse out has two modes. There's a PWM, you can cut it off in one direction. There's also the multi-pulse mode, which gives a different kind of sound with really, really thin pulses that go positive and negative. The LEDs here show the whether you're more positive or more negative on one of the PWMs. You can voltage control this too, of course, from another oscillator. So here's a triangle out. And you can get it, with a maximum signal, you can get it clipping out a little bit. Um, there's a volts per octave in that's uh, internally calibrated. There's an exponential in, in that you can use also to do volts per octave control, but you can change the range. It's got a bipolar control. So if I set it up with a really slow ramp, you can do it in either direction. Linear FM, same thing. Pulses modulator, we heard that already. Uh, there's also this interesting blend output, which uses a special uh, crossfading circuit to blend between the four normal waveforms. So if I turn the blend control this way, I get sine on one end of this pot, and I get ramp on the other end. If I turn the blend control this way, I get pulse on one end and triangle on the other end. So I could, let's say, choose a pulse waveform, and then I can fade back and forth to a sine. If I stick the blend CV in with a signal, I can create that blending function. I can control that with a voltage, which is kind of fun. There's also a sync input. So you can reset the oscillator with uh, another signal to create really cool hard sync effects. It works particularly well on some of the things like sine waves. Okay, so that's the basics of the oscillator. The mixer, just to briefly cover it, has a CV and gate output that goes as a MIDI converter. There's a through connection. Um, the CV and gate can be, gates can be used in pairs uh, together or separately. So you can you set it up by pressing the set button and then the LED blinks in different patterns to show you which kind of uh, setup you're gonna do. So you can have it be separate different MIDI channels if you want. You can have it be um, split keyboard. You can have it be uh, polyphonic or, or more like duophonic. Uh, there's an ARP Odyssey type mode where uh, you get unison playing, and, but if you press a second key, the second gate and CV split off and you get uh, like a monophonic function on the additional notes. There's more about that in the instruction manual. 
Um, you can assign CCs or pitch bends to it so that you can use them just as like MIDI controllers to generate voltages, which is pretty useful. Um, the mixer section has a line out that comes out on bananas and on mini jacks. There's a, a headphone output which has a separate level control. There's an auxiliary send which uh, the channels can each send. This is post fader send to the aux jack. This can be used for a reverb send. I'll turn that down. <laughs> um, so a typical way this would be used on the on the this system would be to use the um, there's a stereo in and three mono ins. So you'd use the stereo in commonly for the effect processor and then use the aux send to send a signal to the effects processor. That's a normal way you could leave it patched if you wanted. Um, then the other three inputs could be used for other uh, sources. The left and right in on the stereo ins are pre-wired to be on the left and right channels. The other three inputs have pan controls so that channel three and four have a pan pot and channel five replaces the pan pot with a voltage input which is really useful because you can feed an, a negative five to plus five voltage which is the normal range of signals on the system to pan back and forth. Uh, the interesting thing is that all the signals in the system other than pulses and gates are all in that range of negative five to plus five volts so everything should be compatible with everything else. Okay so I'm going to show you some of, them, of the effects processor now. So I'm going to do something so I can just get some... Have a... So I have a sweep going and I'm going to send, make sure that there's some sending out here to the effects processor. And now I, I can get some return from the effects processor. You can hear there's a reverb. You can get different reverb sounds and delay sounds. You just choose them by clicking the knob and then turning it. If you want to put the other reverb on. So you can turn the reverb mix and delay mix up and down separately. So there. There's different, uh, there's three different delay types. The reverb sounds like this. There's two different reverbs. So we can turn that down. Uh, now I want to show you a little bit about the bottom half of the digital effects. So this is a 24-bit stereo reverb and delay. On the bottom half, we have something completely different. This is a low-fi, like 12-bit uh, CV and audio processor. So you can process control voltages equally as well as you can process sound. Some of the effects are better suited for one than the other, but there's, there's potential to use them for anything you want. So let's say we've got this sound coming in here. Let's put it, let's put the sound, instead of right into the mixer, let's stick it in the signal in on the bottom half here. And then we'll do the return from here. The signal out will go back to our mixer. So I'm going to start with the malt. So now we can't hear anything. This is a digital multiplier. So there's two parameters. Pram 1 and Pram 2. Pram 2 has a CV input as well, which you can adjust the level on. So you could use a signal. Let's say, let's say we take another oscillator signal, make it really slow. And we're going to put that in the Pram input. Now we're creating a sort of a digital ring modulator. This is all processed in 12 bits. You can adjust the offset of the signal. You can make a clip at the endpoints, which is really cool. You can also do something, let's say we get rid of that. We just want to hear the signal by itself. This is a sample and hold that has different bit depth and sample rate adjustments. So this is doing like a bit crusher by turning down the sample rate. 
This is doing a bit depth reduction by reducing the number of bits from 12 all the way down to 1. You can also do a wave folder, which works particularly well with sine waves or smooth, you know, waves with not a lot of harmonics. You can add extra harmonics. You can also adjust the uh, harmonics with the param input. So that's kind of fun. And then you can also, there's also distortion mode, which has different kinds of distortion. Okay, so let's talk about the K4. I have two K4s in the system too. Um, K4 is an envelope generator, which is the top two sections, and um, LFO, which is, I call the modulator, which is the bottom two sections. So there's four complete separate channels. You can hook them together in different ways, and I'll show you that really, really quickly. So let's say we have, we've got our signal coming from our oscillator. Let's put a, some sort of a modulation into it. We hook it up here. When this is sitting at rest, it puts out the uh, lowest voltage. So I, I can press... The gate button simulates having a signal into the gate. So there's three modes that the top two sections can operate in. You either attack, hold, release, or up, hold, down, if you, if you prefer. Um, attack, release which doesn't hold, used for, for percussive type sounds, and also LFO mode. So LFO mode has an interesting feature. If you put it into LFO mode, it will start going up and down. But if you push the gate, now it becomes a momentary LFO that will always go down and, and stop at the bottom. So that can be really useful to be able to trigger some sort of a modulation that can start and stop. Um, you can adjust the up and down times with voltages and also there's a, an output that puts out a pulse during the release phase or the down phase uh, which can be useful to create delays so you can have the, out, the cycle connection attached to the gate on the next unit and then you can create things that go successively. On the bottom half is just an just an LFO puts out a triangular type waveform if the gain is turned down or if you turn it up it turns it turns into a, a trapezoidal wave which becomes almost perfectly square at high gain settings the speed control can go from about 1 minute per cycle to about 40 hertz and there's another interesting thing. You can sync the two LFOs together. So if you put it in the three position, the other one will sync to it. And you can adjust the phase to be plus and minus 180 degrees. So that you can create out of phase or phase uh, synced LFOs, which is kind of neat. So if you're doing panning functions or other kinds of functions where you want things to be 90 or 180 degrees of the phase or something in between, then you can do that. So the last module that I'd like to talk about that's part of the first uh, system that we're doing is the K5 filter amp. This is four identical channels that have uh, a, a VCA. It's a high quality 2164 based VCA and also a, a low pass filter with a resonance control. So let's say we put a signal in here. Let's put a ramp wave or something that's got lots of harmonics. Let's patch the amp out into the mixer. So the level control produces a, a voltage input into the CV circuit which you can use to set the offset, but you can also just use it as a manual control. It has the full range of control. Uh, it controls the gain of the amp output, which is just a VCA, and it controls the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter. So in this mode, you hear the volume going up and down. In the low pass mode, you hear the cutoff frequency going up and down. 
and the resonance of the filter is adjustable. If we stick a signal from our modulator of the K4 into here, we can create sweeping effects. And uh, basically there's four channels like that. So you can use the low pass filter as a way to create sort of a musical opening and closing of the signal, or you can just use the amp output if you just want straight gain up and down. Uh, all the filter and amp are based around the uh, 2164 VCA chip, so the audio quality is very, very good and very low noise. This has been a quick overview of some of the functions of the, uh, of the first five modules, K1 through 5, on the Kilpatrick format modular synth. We've got more modules and uh, more types of system configurations coming soon. Thanks a lot.